people, including Christians, often get things and they forget God or they don't even think about God or they feel they were obligated. And what we're going to look at today is promotion. And some people think, well, a promotion, you know, well, I worked hard. I've been with this company so long. I brown nose my way. And, you know, they're so happy to run home and tell their family what had happened to them and any kind of promotion. Whether it be occupation, sports. A raise. In Numbers chapter 24. In verse 11. You have Balak. Speaking to Balaam. Balak is a ruler. King. And he's asked Balaam. And will ask Bal Balaam three times to curse the nation of Israel. And you can't curse what God's blessed. A warning to America to side note don't mess with Israel, protect them. So Balak says to Balaam, verse 11, now therefore flee. Thou to thy place. You, you didn't do what I told you to do. Get out of my face. You didn't do the job. You didn't do the performance that you were hired for. I thought to promote thee to great honor. Alright, so there are some times with promotion you didn't get the promotion because you didn't deserve it. You were hired for one cause and you failed. But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. What he's saying is, all right, I wanted you to curse Israel. You went, and he did. He went and spoke to God, and God gave him a message. And it was not the message that Balaam wanted. So, God was blamed. We can properly blame God. Now, I live in the state of Florida, and we have a hurricane right now going to the south of us. I thank God that that storm is not coming this way. But if the hurricane or any hurricane would have come through, we would say it's an act of God blaming God. How come God's not on our thoughts when we get something we want, we get a promotion, we get a pay raise. We get a step above where we are now. Why don't we think of God? We're so quick to blame God. And yet, the thanksgiving of God is lacking. Do you know thanksgiving was part of the offerings of the children of Israel? Beside the sin offering, there was a thanksgiving offering. In Judges chapter 9 is a parable. In verse 9. And it's a parable about somebody seeking a higher office.
You know, we're so quick to say, thank God, we don't mean it. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, whereby me thy honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And what the, is, you know what? The fatness, my fruit, and I love olives. Should I go be promoted and move myself from the honor of God? I remember, remember we just saw about the honor in, in numbers. Sometimes the best promotion you get is you get none. You are left where you are because you honor God. That's one aspect of not getting that promotion. We shouldn't be angry. What if that promotion would be to have you lacking in church service? And I know many Christians have gone and got another position and missed church. And they get worries and concerns and anxieties. Maybe you are where you are, you didn't get what you expected. Because it's where God wants you. And where God wants you is where honor. Verse 11. The fig tree. There's another different tree. said unto him, Should I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? There's no promotion for the fig tree because you know what? He's got good fruit. We are to bear fruit for, for God. We are to be fruitful Christians. And the fig tree says, hey, you know what? My fruit is good. It's not evil. It's not naughty. It's good fruit. Stay where you're at. Be content. See, promotion is Being where you're at being used by God is contentment. There's a place of honoring God. Stay there. There's a place to be fruitful for God. Stay there. Now if God moves you, amen. Praise him. Verse 13, the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, new wine, not alcoholic, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the tree? He says, listen, I cheer God. And my co-workers are cheerful. That's being happy. Being fruitful. Honoring God. Things might change drastically. If a promotion would be warranted. Be content. Now I'm not saying don't, don't seek a promotion. But you better seek God in prayer. You better find out what that promotion would do for you. But most important, what that promotion, whether you get it or you don't get it, what will it do for God? That's the whole idea. Look at Psalms. Psalm 75. Promotion. And this promotion is not just mean, okay, higher up in the job, it's 
being changed from one position to a better position. All right, you are a, a, a church member and you get put into the office of deacon, that's a promotion. You are a wife that stays home and you take care of your family and you become pregnant. Now you're being promoted to a mother by God. It's being exalted to a new fashion of life that you weren't there before. It says, For promotion cometh near uh, the east, nor the west, nor from the south. But God is judge. He put it down one and set us up another. Alright, so we got east, west, south. Where's north? God. God is in the north. And God is judge. And it says he put it down one. That's an opposite of a promotion. You're going back to the mail room. You're going back to the bottom of the ladder. That's God. That's where you blame God. That's where Balaam say, well, God, thank you very much. I did what you told me to say, and I didn't get no promotion. Okay. You can blame God. But God is judge. He knows why, and he knows what he did. God said, I mean, God put it down, one. Okay, you don't get the promotion, you get a lower position. And set it up another. All right, that promotion has been given by God. Look at verse 6. That person who did get the promotion, that you didn't get the promotion, that was God. This nation, this country needs to realize there were no votes stolen. Because God allowed President Joe Biden to be in the office. God had already allowed Donald Trump four years of presidency. He allowed President Obama and President Clinton and the Bushes. Your boss is there because of God. Well, you know, Satan. Oh, okay, Job 1 and 2. Satan may have allowed God, Matthew 4. But Satan needs permission from God. Everybody is where they are, whether Satan puts them there, but it's by permission of God the judge. Listen, the next evil, wicked, vile ruler of this world, the Antichrist, will be allowed by God. And what the Bible tells us of all the wickedness, God allow it. I've had some wicked bosses. I've had some stupid bosses. But yet they are the bosses. And I wasn't. And today I see it was God and not me. And I rebelled many times. 
And may the Lord forgive me for all my rebellion as an employee. Because I've sinned. First Samuel. I'm trying to read First Samuel twelve. I may not get this right. Let me do it. My writing is so terrible. Psalms. Again, back to Psalms 78, 70. He chose David also his servant. God chose David and took him from the sheepfolds. Now, David was a shepherd. Who put him as the king of Israel and Judah? God did. When you read the story of, 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 of Saul and David, you will see that God set his heart on this boy, David. The nation had no idea. That young man that went and killed Goliath had no idea that was going to be their leader. And when David is on the run, even anointed by Samuel to be king, when he's on the run, running from Saul, they didn't have any idea he was going to reign as the king. But God chose him. Look at Romans 13. Look at verse 13, 1. Let every soul, save the lost, be subject unto the higher powers, president, police, mayor, judge, boss. For there is no power but of God. God put the president in office. He put the mayor in office. He put the governor in office. He put the police in, in their position. He put your boss in the position. And he's put you in your position. That be are ordained of God. Your boss. The President of the United States of America. King Charles. The mayor, the judge, are ordained as the ordaining of a pastor and the deacons of a church. They are ordained by God into their office. Don't worry if President Biden can't handle whatever. Don't worry about whatever. Pre president Biden, and I call him President is going to stand before God one day, saved or lost. And he's going to have to give an account of his presidency. And you will have to give an account for your rebellion against God's president. Even if he's sent by Satan. He's not my president. And there's other filthy things they say about him and they got him wearing diapers and all that be careful maybe God put you in diapers be not deceived God's not mocked what sort of man sowed that he shall also reap 
I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church. If you are mocking your president, the leader that is ordained the powers of God, you are ranking on your president. You are rebelling against God, and you don't deserve to be in that pulpit. You need to step down. Because you're going to get upset when they rank on you, the leader of that church. For whoso resists the power, you don't like the president, you don't like your preacher, you don't like the judge, you don't like the president, uh, I mean your, your boss. Whoso resists the power, I'm not going to do that's not my job. That's their job. Resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now that's not mean you're going to hell. That means you're not going to get promoted. You're going to be stuck where you're at. You're going to be miserable. There's nothing more worse than somebody being miserable because they are defying the word of God, Romans 13. The number one thing you may be miserable about and, and, and you feel unhappy with your life is how are you treating the people that are over you? children mistreating their parents and are unhappy. A children not listening to the school teacher which is over their authority. A, 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 a saved person not listening to the preacher. A worker not listening to the supervisor. A resident of a state not listening to their mayor or the governor. A citizen of the United States not listening to the president. A soldier not listening to the captain. Or whoever's over them. And when you resist, when you rebel, don't tread on me. You are resisting against the power of God. And then you turn around and call yourself a Christian. You're making a mockery of the name and life of Jesus. Jesus Christ stood before Pilate and didn't say a word. Didn't call for justice. Didn't rank on him. He spoke properly. The disciples, the apostles, lived under Nero, who killed Christians violently. And Paul writes 13, obey the higher power. That higher power of Paul is Nero. Peter writes the same thing. It's Nero. And I guarantee Nero has killed friends and brothers and sisters of Paul that he knew and Peter. Look at Matthew. Matthew 4. Matthew 4 8. Again, the devil takes him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Another place says, in a moment of time. So here is Satan. Presenting to Jesus. I don't know how he did it. But all the kingdoms in the world. All, worldwide. The unknown world of America. China. All the nations. The devil says. All these will I give thee. All the kingdoms. All the, all the rulership. If thou will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, if Satan didn't have that power, Jesus said, Listen, you can't give it to me. And yet Jesus doesn't say that. It is true, the powers 
from your mother and father to your teachers to the principal to the police department to the mayor of your city or town the governor the president of the United States the Supreme Court their representatives and senators your boss may have sold out to Satan may have none of those are all lost you'll be surprised you'll be in heaven by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ but all those people if they are put in that office by Satan Satan can put men and women in office God can put men or women in office he put David on the throne he put even King Saul a, 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 a really man that churned his heart from fear to you know going to see a witch rebelling against the word of God and God put that man in office a wonderful man like David and God put him in office Jezebel most wicked woman God put her in office the apostles God put them in office Over the years, pastors, God put them in office. We're in the lad to see in church age, and I say a lot of times, most of these pastors are put in the office by men in the devil. But Romans 13, regardless whether that person is in by God or that person is in by the devil, whether he's likable or he's hateable, whether he's sweet or whether he's bitter, whoever that person is, is put there by God, and you may not have got your promotion, you may not have gotten your raise, you may not have been exalted, because God, the judge, said no. I don't know why. It may be to your benefit. Or you may have gotten the raise, the promotion. God did it. Yet, man would be more prone to, God, you didn't give it to me, rather than, what a blessing God's given me. And friend, I do it. And I had prayed for something, and God answered that prayer, and you know, I forgot about it. I moved on to the next prayer. You know? Whether you're saved or lost, that's, that's, that's the two classes of men. You're saved or you're lost. You're ahead of a group of people, or you're one of the people. President of the United States, whether God put him in office, or Satan put him in office. you got to obey. There is no chance in the Bible, oh, I'm going to disobey, or I'm going to obey. That's no chance. There's only one loophole in obedience for a Christian a Christian if that authority figure and that's in the book of Acts with Peter and John if they were to have you do something or say something that defiles the word of God we rather obey God Peter said now chances are in America they're not going to have you go again to rebel against the word of God. And they, now I have had it happen. 
straight preaching here in Daytona Beach, Florida. I have been told by the police a couple times, if you keep on preaching, you're going to jail. Now, I respectfully said, okay, well, let me go talk to my lawyer. And if I'm right, I'll be back next week. And if I'm wrong, which I knew I wasn't, I apologize right now. And I went back to my lawyer, and he talked to my lawyer, and they said, they can't do that. And they said, if they do do that, give me a call, and, you know, we'll get everything else straightened out. So it didn't happen again, but if they were to come up to me and say, listen, you know, you keep on preaching. You're going to go to jail. I am not going to throw up my fist. I, I'm just going to sit there and say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing at the tone that I do it. And if I get arrested, I get arrested. Yes, sir. No, sir. I don't punch and kick and holler and scream. It's called respect. There's no respect. There's no character. You see, in New York Harbor, we got the Statue of Liberty, but we have no responsibility. And if you want that promotion, pray for it. And if you don't get that promotion, okay, well, thank God. Because there's a reason why he didn't give it to you. Pray over it. Maybe tell you your work performance sucks. <laughs> Maybe he tell you you're not capable. Maybe he's trying to prevent you from going astray. And if you get that permission, uh, promotion, don't forget to thank God. And give God the honor and glory. And for sure he don't get that promotion selling out to Satan. Because it may not be God that got you that promotion. It may have been Satan. Because one day Satan showed up to Judas and said, knocking on his heart, hey, I got a job for you. You want to do it? And it did not turn out well for Judas. And if you go the route of Satan, it does not turn out well. Now, you can't lose your salvation, but... It's that plain and simple. Let's get the honor to God that is due, and let's learn respect. Let's learn to hold our tongue. And let's come to be, the fact is, let's shut up about the president. And if you want to keep on talking about the president, what you're doing, well, put your name on the ballot next time. And let's see what you do in the White House. Because you must be better.